Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an electronic voltmeter from Brulanquer, a type 2425. And look at the state this is in. Super yellow, crusty, crusty. And this is kind of normal uh, when stuff arrives to my lab it looks really really uh, dirty and gross sometimes and this is before my usual wash and clean up just to show you what kind of stuff that i normally do and uh, all the buttons here they kind of stick and they oh and <clears throat> you need to press real hard and it's see this I don't know if anything works here or not. So I'm gonna go and clean this up and then we can start the <laughs> start all the tests and stuff. I just really wanted to show you this. Yikes. So after a little bit of cleaning, look at that. Oh there's still actually it has been so dirty for so long. It's actually recolored the paint. But anyway, now I can stand touching this unit, so that is nice. I've been massaging the switches quite a lot, so this seems to be working good now. And those four, they're actually mechanically connected together. Look at that. So this is how it works. One flips. Oops, yeah, see that one? There's a little bit of... I think I need to clean this. And that will be the range switches look it feels like there's supposed to be a click and hold and that is completely gone so i mean there's a long slider in here with a little bit of click hold that is not working so i expect i need to hold down one of them to get anything on the meter so that is what i want to show oh yeah let's before we power it up Let's look at the let's look at the back. And yes, it is for 240. Frequency response as well. Shows a little bit of the different fast and slow settings. We got an AC output. And look at that. We can run off a battery. Battery one and battery two. So we need to Okay, we need two different voltages and a plus or minus, and we also got a DC output here. External time constant. Hmm. Well, well, that is probably better explained in the manual, so. But let's just power it up and see what happens. And here we go with mains is applied. Nothing bad happened. Ooh, we got light and all good things. Slow and fast, RMS, yeah. well let me input something and let's see what happens. Okay, here we go, here is, oops, yeah, okay, not a whole not a whole lot, right? And then it goes negative. Okay, that's definitely... This is not... Okay, see? Yeah. There is a response of some... Ah, uh, that is the problem. Switches. I will be back. So... I ended up taking everything apart here so I could clean up the contacts a lot better. And look what happens. Oh, look at that. All the switches, they are now super duper good and reliable. And those also goes super nice and smooth. But the alcohol I cleaned with kind of dissolves the white paint. 
the meter is painted with. So I needed to take everything apart here so the paint can glue, can dry up. And then I cleaned the glass on both sides. So now it's going to be a nice sharp picture. And all I have to do now is glue the glass in and assemble everything again. And then, then I can actually start testing this this uh, a little bit more but meanwhile we can have a little look on what is inside and this is not the original uh, transformer this is uh, some sort of a repair right and this one only got one set of primary windings so that is why see they removed all the different settings and then use this connection but that is only to get access to the fuse because this is the connection that goes all the way up to the fuse and back again so that's uh, the idea with that first i saw this i was thinking why oh no more loose connections in this i've seen those fail before but this is of course because they wanted to uh, access the fuse other than that, it's exactly what I expect. Uh, lots of op amps and uh, field defect transistors and uh, fancy amplifiers stuff. A lot of uh, different time constants and all that is, of course, because it can do RMS and peak and, uh, and whatnot, as you can see here. So, ooh, I have to be careful with that glass. Let's look on the bottom side of the PCB it is quite dirty in this area because I actually think all this gross stuff we saw uh, from the front that is some sort of old uh, contact clean or lubricant or some other gross stuff that was the one big failure so that ended up here and let me sample if I do like this look at that color this is not so good so i need to clean this up a little bit more but i cleaned all the contacts and washed this up and down and with high pressure air so that should be all clean well there's still a little bit of cleaning to do here look at that yikes but anyway i expect to see some signal on the on the meter now at least we we can see all the contacts they're moving correctly so that is a good start so let me uh, glue this and assemble and then we can get started I am now back playing with this meter after I did a lot of cleaning the sound and the feel of all the buttons is just amazing and this is one volt RMS input at one kilohertz and if I go to the one it is a little bit out of full scale but just a tiny little bit so let's try and give it okay let's try the level here and say 0 0.1 nine volt rms no what happens oh i'm an idiot oh was that the wrong that was 900 i'm an idiot it was the wrong output <laughs> sorry about that okay 900 and it's just a little bit over an 800 Seven, six, okay, yeah, I can probably find the trimmer for that range and uh, fine tune that. So how is this working then peak? Ooh. So now I'm in peak, right? And then I go to reset. Oh, it's slow. Oh, look at that. So this is fast. I don't know 
know what I'm saying? That, that is a little bit weird. So that is one. Ah, because it's now peak. Peak volt. It's not RMS. It's me who's silly. So, of course, this is how it works. So now we are in peak. And I can reset here. That means, yeah, okay, we have a, a response. Oh, slow. <laughs> well, that's actually pretty cool. So, I mean, I think it works. RMS. What's the difference between RMS and average? That is a little bit different, right? Minus peak. Ah, so it's looking for the lowest peak. That is pretty cool. And RMS again. Full. Let me let me try something funny. This is one. Okay, this is 900 millivolts, and this is uh, one kilohertz. Uh, I think it is 0.5 hertz. Let's try and play with the lowest. Let's go for one. One hertz. But it was supposed to. 0.5. So, oh, that is of course not in. RMS is probably in peak. Yeah, I don't know. That just don't seems to be working. So this is one hertz, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then yeah, okay. From twenty and up it measures the same. So there's probably a capacitor in here somewhere that's a little bit too uh, low, right? And it's supposed to go to uh, 0.5 megahertz. Okay, so let's go the other way then. So let's say 200 kilohertz. Ooh, it went a little bit up. Okay, 200, 3, 4, 500, 6. Seven, eight, nine, one megahertz. Okay, let's go two. Okay, okay, okay. Three, four megahertz. So that is one megahertz, and it's actually a lot more. Uh huh. So there's a little bit of. And then we go down to 100 kilohertz here. All right, so. Bandwidth up. There's no problem at all. Did you see what happened? I pushed the millivolt. And now, yeah, yeah. Ha ha. This is one millivolt RMS at one kilohertz. And again, it's doing the same. So that was one millivolt. Let's go 0 0.9. 0 0.9 millivolts, huh? Hee <laughs> hee. So it also works in the super low range as well. Yeah, I am really happy. I think this is really what I wanted to show you guys today. There's not a lot more to show you inside this wonderful box. I think, didn't I show you the entire internal goody goody stuff here yeah i think i did we got some really cute dual fets and funky stuff down there right probably not that one but down there yeah and some good old op amps and i think i saw some yeah 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 down here look at that one What is that? 80, 39, some good stuff. We got quite a lot of those actually. 
It's a little bit impossible to reach the trimmers down there. You're probably going to, yes, you are going to access them from the bottom. That is the main idea. Instead of just calling them P7 and P this and P that, I mean, wouldn't it have been really nice if they wrote the different ranges or frequencies or whatever it is just to be nice and friendly? Somebody changed this up, right? Good job cleaning up.